सुनार मानो नहीं वाटर हैज बिकम अ वेरी स्केर्स कमोडिटी वर्ल्ड वाइड द एक्सपर्ट्स हैव प्रेडिक्टेड दैट इफ द इश्यूज आर नॉट रिजॉल्व दैट कुड लीड टू वाटर वॉर्स एज द फूड वॉर्स एंड अदर सॉर्ट ऑफ वॉर्स वी हैव सीन ऑलरेडी सो साउथ एशिया इज अ वेरी क्लोज Uh, it's a region which has close community and it depends on water sources which are uh, very co- which are common to different community as as well we have three basic sources one is indus the other are in the gangetic plains and the ganges and the third is brahmaputra and the brahmaputra and the ganges are very close by water food and energy they are intertwined and water food and energy security is paramount for some sustainable peace and that is the topic today how we can develop a framework of understanding that can be implemented in this whole region where bangladesh pakistan nepal india and all these countries can live in peace and enjoy the fruit of cooperation we have today uh, to my right is anam khan uh, she is also she is anchor today she is also handling a project on the subject and that is the reason she is here to give some small morsel uh, on the topic uh, in between and to her right is dr imran khalid he is also uh, researching on the same topic and to his right is one and only mr shamsul mulk he had been Thank chairman you. of the wabda and uh, obviously people would introduce him as the chief minister of nwfp khaber pakhtun khwa now but i personally would like to yeah, yeah i would like to highlight one thing that he was a junior engineer at the first dam when he was being built when the second dam was being built he was superintending engineer there when the third dam was being built he was the project director when trabela was being built he was the xcn or the uh, chief engineer there and he's the one person who had a level of knowledge to cooperate with the american firm that came to build the dam so all the dams in pakistan and the water work which we see now was built because of his uh, i mean diligence and hard work and just to kick start the program i would like to ask uh, dr imran to give us very small basic premise to start the program and you do you want to chip in to ask something Um, um good morning to everybody uh, i would like to ask uh, dr imran to just start with a, a little bit of a brief introduction on how the south asia um has common problems relating to water food and energy and uh, which challenges are upcoming for us uh, as south asian region okay um the as we all know the this region uh, the whole of south asia has been highly dependent on uh water for ages since uh, our cities uh, our communities uh gathered around these water bodies uh because of the sustenance that they provided um so the watersheds that come along with these rivers um are very different from the political boundaries that have come up uh over the past century or so so the one of the main issue is is how do you deal uh with each other uh when the issues of water so how does india and pakistan deal uh do how do india and pakistan deal with each other when it comes to the indus river basin and how do bangladesh uh and india deal with each other when it comes to ganges and the brahmaputra and the same with china because a lot of these rivers arise in the himalaya mountains and so uh china comes into play as well um so that's one part secondly this Uh, a large amount of population that's living in these areas uh, it's the pro- perhaps the largest uh concentration of population anywhere in the world and uh they have needs for food for energy and uh, that is the question how do we uh test these waters in such a way so that the uh, that we're doing it in a sustainable manner and that we're not uh, uh having conflict over it and uh, becoming at odds over something that we've used uh, mutually for centuries um i'm also going to um besides population i think um what some people might say that it's our culture in south asia that we not um 
we are wasting water, we are not still aware of, um, and also the technologies are poor, they're, they're old school for farmers. I think those would also be some of the challenges and of course climate change as we are one of the most vulnerable uh, regions towards climate change. Definitely, uh, climate changes, uh, it's, 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 it's the hot topic right now and, and we can see that. We, uh, in, in Pakistan, for example, we've observed how the, the floods have become recurrent over the past uh, uh, many years. And Shamsul Muksal uh, will tell you the, the, about the flood of 2010, which was, you know, which was one in uh, a 10,000 year flood, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. The biggest and disaster the planet Earth has seen. Right, and, 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 and which, which, which <coughs> enveloped the whole of our country. So obviously climate change is uh, a, a huge thing that needs to be uh, thought about when it comes to policy making and decision making. Um, you know, people are talking about storage, but we also need to understand that uh, with a growing population, uh, how are we going to access clean drinking water uh, for urban areas, uh, water for agriculture in rural areas, uh, and that's not only for Pakistan, but also for India, Bangladesh, and China. All right. Shamsul Muksab, we, we just heard that it's not only the supply side, the demand side is poor as well. Yes. But the question is that, uh, for example, one of the important problems that comes with the Indus Basin, I am not very much aware of Brahmaputra. Incidentally, what I tell you is, is very interesting. The sources of Brahmaputra and Indus are only 70 miles away from each yeah. other. Yeah. And then one goes all the way to that side and it drops to the east of India. And the other comes all the way to this side. To the extreme west. To the extreme west and drops there. Yeah. And uh, one of the very important problem that is actually uh, making agriculture very difficult in Pakistan is that the variation of flows in the winter and summer seasons. 84% yeah. of the water comes in summer, 84% of the river waters, annual average river water, 84%, and 16% comes winter. in the winter. But our needs are between the winter crop and the summer crop is one and two. And then about 105 million acre feet of total consumption in the irrigation system. What uh, we do is, there's about 70 million acre feet we need in summer. I was talking of that 84% is percentage, not mm. MNA, yeah, yeah. not million yeah. yeah. acres. Yeah. What we need is 70 million acre feet. Now I'm talking of million acre feet. And 35 million acre feet in winter. We don't have 35 million acre feet in winter. And that is why we are, our agriculture is, yield is very the good. most lowest yield that we have. Yep. If you're talking of the benefit of the farmers, <coughs> then they are putting the same effort in the system. The seeds, the care, the water that he is to water his crop, the care that he takes of the crop itself. But he gets the lowest yield. The choice is, can you improve that water availability? Can you transfer water from that when it is in excess? It becomes a flood. When the water is in excess of your need, it becomes a flood. When the water is less than your need, it, it is a drought. Mm. Yeah. You are creating a flood and a drought condition for yourself at your own choice. Mm. Without dams, dams are the only source and the only instruments where you could do, you could reduce the excess flow to a manageable position and then you can make that water available during the winter season to, the, to your agriculture. Right, thank you. Here we take a break and after the break we will try to analyze the situation and bring in more facts on the subject, so please stay with us. Diverse. It's original. It's SDTV. Actually, um, we are um, 
undergoing a project uh, which is funded by the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade uh, Government of Australia, uh, which is looking at the three river basins across the five South Asian countries. And we have uh, come up with a diagnostic study um, which you has perceptions of stakeholders mainly about the problems in these rivers. So uh, one problem that was identified was um, in Pakistan, the perception usually is that India is responsible for drying up the rivers in Pakistan. I would like your views on this, sir. Well, I don't think uh, as a professional, I have to be truthful. Mm -hmm. Because anyone who is uh, not truthful cannot be a professional. I always tell people Shamsul Mulk has no personal opinions. His opinions are based on information and data that is available to him from credible uh, sources. Mm. That's how his information is. <clears throat> India is not responsible for our uh, problems. Problems are self-created. But India taking the opportunity, knowing that we are not the owners of our water, we are the absentee landlords of our water. Absentee landlords are those who come to their land once a while and see to it that a good part of it has been occupied by people who do not have a title for that. Mm. But they are lost. So, I think I am very clear and this is actually when you mentioned this question of that what should these three basins these countries do is, uh, I will not go into the merits and demerits of the various agreements that have been uh, sort of uh, uh, made by the various countries uh, with the adjacent country for the purpose of uh, sharing of waters. But one thing that I, I, I would like to make a statement, whatever it is, it should be very faithfully implemented. Very faithfully implemented and the responsibility for that faithful implementation will be of the bigger partner, mm. not of a smaller partner. Because it is always when there is a problem between the elders and the youngers and the brothers, it is the elder brother who is to be very generous and who is to be very sort it out. Uh, yes, exactly. He is to show to him that I am not, I'm not interested in taking your right. That's all. So this is what it is. And I think, unfortunately and most regrettably, uh, India has not shown this uh, capacity. To be generous and to be uh, to be uh, uh, sort of uh, helpful uh, in such situations, and uh, this is the problem. Uh, Transboundary water is generally a very negative uh, thing. Oh. Comes into mind when you speak of it. So, um, do you think it's because uh, India is not uh, taking up its share? Is it because we are not taking up our own ownership? All the, all the resource is very becoming scarce. I'll tell you one thing. What's the problem? <clears throat> the problem is that the humanity has learned only one way of in the past uh, thousands of years of negotiations with each other or disputes. And that is the uh, uh, zero-sum game. Mm. That is, my losses are your gains. And your gains and, and your losses are my gains. Mm. I think the time has come along that we should stop think, using this uh, method of uh, negotiations in case of water. Because water is not, is an economic, uh, uh, well, uh, it is economic dimensions. But more than that, it is life. And I would hate ever to see countries fighting for that because in that case, they'll be fighting for life. Mm. And the viciousness of the wars when one party fights for life, I think has not been seen in the world. How vicious it could become. Okay. So, <clears throat> what we should learn is that we should develop a win-win game, a strategy of win-win. And that is what I would feel is that we could, uh, I think the, these countries should, uh, should so cooperate with each other and uh, finding out the 
knowledge of science and technology which brings you more crop per drop mm. this was the le- lesson which was i was the vice president of international commission of irrigation and drainage and i remember that in those days we used to really propagate a lot about this more crop per drop so it is if i may uh, no, of course um on second what uh, shantul mukhsab has said uh, with respect to cooperation in pakistan uh, and india have had a treaty since 1960 we nearly went to war in 1948 when india stopped uh, uh, the waters coming into our canals but after that the world bank worked with pa- both pakistan and india to come up with a treaty that is being used as a, a case study and a successful example of cooperation when it comes to dealing with water resources it has stood the test of time uh we, we went to war in 65 71 and nearly a full fledged war in 1999 but the treaty remained um what the treaty treaty uh said was that three rivers the eastern rivers would, would go to uh india while three western rivers the indus jhelum and chenab would come to pakistan now obviously india has dropped some dams there but they are supposed to be run of the river in that they are not supposed to take away large the amounts watershed. of water from the in, in the space um if there is a conflict the uh, there is a strategy a neutral expert is involved if the neutral expert doesn't work out there's a court of arbitration that we go to so all conflicts when it came when it comes to water uh dissonance amongst india and pakistan uh have been resolved amicably when it comes to the indus space yeah now now there is no treaty uh mind you uh between india and china between india and bangladesh between india and nepal so this is perhaps an example that can be used by countries across the region, across the region and perhaps across the world as something that can be utilized uh in a, uh for sustainable water management i'm just going to say just uh, just uh, let me leave it to yeah. you i'm ramran I mean actually it there didn't do create any problems in these wars about the Indus water treaty because the treaty is essentially on the face of it uh more beneficial to India and I think the knowledgeable people in India know that if they this somehow other you know this is one treaty which cannot which one single party cannot uh, abrogate mm. they don't Even want to revisit abrogation it. also require the an agreement between the two of them because if one country tries to abrogate the others does not it's still there it will continue to be there the question is this <clears throat> that whatever the problems of pakistan are are not of india's making this is the point i'm trying to say there it there is a potential that india could make use of this our 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 uh, approach to our ownership of that water so secondly that the question of their building of hydro projects it is not what they think what they would do it is what their capacity is because with whenever you are talking of ad- adverse uh, to adverse people uh, um, uh, agreeing to something it is not what is his intention his intention today is this tomorrow it could change then what do you do therefore what they say is it is not the intention it is the capacity to do damage to do harm don't give that capacity to your adversary but technical designs are uh, not such that uh, i mean technically they are the for example design. they will say you keep the water level at uh, say 1200 and if there is a to 1300 what can you do suppose in any situation there is a to 1300 yeah so uh, so they they store water <clears throat> which they are not supposed to do but there is an ins- there is there is a there, there is a infrastructure which can enable them to do that so this is the point and that is why i have been saying india's rights to use the pakistan's waters for generation of hydel is only limited to the extent of that hydel which is needed in kashmir not for the purpose is also of transporting it through a a, a transmission line all the way to the ganges basin and and, and uh, electrifying an industrial town in the ganges basin this is not for that purpose it is only to the extent of because these exceptions have been gone look there are two sets of words i said this thing earlier also all the waters this is used in article 2 which is for allocation of the three eastern rivers to india and this is used also in article 3 
which is for allocation of the three western rivers to Pakistan. All the waters, this, and then finally, for its unrestricted use. The difference in the wording between two, Article 2 and 3 is only for the reason that since these rivers have historically been flowing in that area, the local people have developed some historical uh, yes, rights for this. Mm. And that you cannot deny. Mm. It will be unfair, it will be inhuman. You Take can't tell a man that them. you were drinking this Indus River water mm. and uh, yesterday and now you can't drink it because it's Pakistan's. No. That is why we have been given this right over the waters, not on the land. It means we must commit that water and we have not uh, 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 thanks uh, uh, Imran, we have not been able to use that water and commit that water. <laughs> Yeah. So, I'm going to catch something from your uh, explanation actually. You, as you said, there's uh, less water for more crop. Yes. Um, there is research, there are better techniques. The, but, uh, on both sides of the border, in fact, all over South Asia, we'll see examples of farmers still using old school techniques which use a lot of water. And we've seen that um, they, they, they don't either don't have the equipment uh, for the new techniques or they're not aware of the new research or uh, it lacks somewhere. Um, whose responsibility do you think it's going to be? Because some people say the private players should intervene and they should be with the ones responsible for reaching up to the farmers, CSO, state. Um. What you mentioned, you said that the people still uh, live with it. Yes, they live with it. Let me tell you that some people who have the money, they use the pump water from the underground. Mm -hmm during that period when it is less in the rivers mm. and they supplement the river supplies with the groundwater. But you know what is happening? What is happening is that m repeated use of that water without its being, and this is a technical matter. Mm. These are the technical words totally. That And there is a study which was made by, I think, the uh, a British uh, institution of this aid. And that study was that in some canal commands in Pakistan, the groundwater is becoming saline because of the repeated lifting and coming back and this mm. without it being impregnating, impregnated with the surface water. Okay. Surface water must be made available at least for that one crop, it must be made available that so that uh, uh, that uh, salinization of the groundwater doesn't take place. Mm. Now these are technical things. This the people. The people only know that I will be replaced and yeah. dis displaced and whatnot. Mm. That's all. The rest of the things are not there. Yeah. So here we take another break, and after the break, we will try to draw some conclusions based on the discussions. Please stay with us. Diverse. It's original. It's SDTV. So welcome back. Before the before the break, we were discussion uh, we were discussing uh, distribution of water between the at the head and the tail. We would like to get your opinion on that, and after that, we would like to ask about the semi-arid pathways too. So you see, yes, the tragedy <coughs> is that this is a problem which has nothing, no connection with the dams. Right. Mm. This is a problem of our social Management. and historical structure of the society. I know this thing that unless and until the Vadera's all land is irrigated fully, no water goes down to the common man. But the tragedy is this, similarly is the problem of re this uh, resettlement. It is the problem of the revenue staff of the government. And the tragedy goes, but the responsibility goes to the dam. This is how it is. Because now, I remember I, as chairman, Wabra, there was a problem, there was something. <coughs> and I was, for example, I was asked this question that, some of the people, when we were building uh, Ghazi Balota, some of the people are asking for a girls' college at uh, 
uh, one of the towns. So I said, put it in the uh, in our list. He said, sir, it's not allowed. Man, what, what do you mean allowed? Says uh, the uh, this, uh, this, uh, um, the rules do not allow. It only allows for the infrastructure building of this. And I made a sentence. Um, I said something at that moment, which became Bob does policy. I said, look, if a project is good for the country, it must be made better for those physically affected. Of course. This is it, and that is what we did. That is why for Ghazi Barota, we established a local Ghazi Barota Tarakiyati Edara. Wabda gave them 100 million rupees as a donation. As a that you do this thing. And secondly, when I was choosing these resettle, the, 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 the alignment, I still remember I was sitting and the general manager was giving it to me and he said, Sir, we have two uh, alignments. One alignment in which uh, the total people affected are 5,000 and uh, it costs this much. Uh, there's another alignment on which only five families are affected. And this is this much. This That was about 20 crores costlier mm. than the first one. But in my mind, what I started thinking was that this is a project of about uh, 80 billion rupees and even if I lose six months in this, then it will be much more than it's 20 crores of rupees. So I said, we go to alignment number two, which was costly, but it had only an effect of five people, five families. Mm. You see? So this is the point. There are many occasions where you do this thing. Secondly, it is never, never the World Bank, you know, you are mentioning one thing, I'm telling you nothing. You just ask the World Bank once. They carried out a study. Mm. They carried out a study of uh, uh, how, what is the resettlement, the involuntary resettlement of people uh, experience in dams. <coughs> you know what was the best that they found? Mangla and Tarvela. Round the world. Mm. Round the world. This is the study of the World Bank. Yeah, <clears throat> because we provided everything in addition to that we provided land we provi provided money and so many other things but this is the revenue staff which is traditionally very corrupt and they take money from people and they do create a lot of problems and this becomes the reason right so, so we are running out of time dr man quickly in few sentences what is price you are handling that project for the semi air address and obviously that is the that that is the tail end in most of the cases right uh, so this is <coughs> the question regarding the tail end users and upper users uh, we're, we're, we're uh, come across that in our project that we're working on. It's called Pathways to Resilience in semi arid Economies. Uh, it's a multi-year, multi-country project. In Pakistan, we're looking at three aspects. One's water governance. The second is the cotton value chain from beginning to the end. Uh, and third is migration and how all of these facets are being impacted by climate change. So in our research, we've, we we did come across people who are saying, you know, you know, if you're not politically connected or if you're not well off, you know, our waters turned off. And this goes back historically to when the canal colonies first came into being. Uh, at that time, the British were giving <coughs> to people and uh, to farm their land, and that has basically right. continued till now, where the people who are less off, less well off, uh, or are not well connected, uh, do suffer the consequences uh, <coughs> of such uh, social issues. So that is one, one, one aspect of it. Secondly, what we're trying to do is to understand how institutions work. For example, in, in the Punjab, it's the irrigation department, which is very, very powerful. Uh, and, uh, which is very? Uh, very powerful. Achoo. And and has been. And, and, and uh, in that respect, if the, uh, there, has, there have been farmer users organizations that have been tried, um, they were tried to, they were tried in various areas, but uh, unfortunately, were not successful due to the uh, uh, influence of the irrigation department. So right. we have to we have to deal with a number <coughs> of issues. It's not. It's very complicated. So, uh, we have a lot to fight of with the incumbent. Uh, I mean, in, in some ways. So very quickly, the sustainable development goals are. You know, there's only one sustainable to finish off the poverty. No, no, it is not bringing to half, and it has been divided into many other 
small goal 17 a water related as well yeah. related as well so have you i mean have been dovetailed in your project somewhere one, one of the main uh, aspects of the sustainable development goals with respect to water is coordination and communication mm. and i think this is where our project will be very valuable in terms of uh, connecting all stakeholders what we're trying to do is to contact people at the federal level the provincial level as well as in uh, the districts that we're working on so that the, the people in the community who are dealing directly with the water uh, are able to you know in, inform the higher ups about their concerns uh, through projects such as this and this projects uh, pro projects such as this can also mm. be implemented across south area so uh, actually i wanted a recommendation in a way that uh, we know that the problems are almost similar across south asia we know that the uh, transboundary issues are more negatively taken in but how can we uh, bring it up to a platform where yes, exactly what yeah. is what i i'm telling you is poverty the, the ruling class in pakistan is not interested in elimination of poverty please hear me very clearly it is only some of the people like him like you social who are who are uh, uh, i mean who recognize the problem and who recognize not this as a problem of a few people it is the most dangerous impediment for progress in the 21st century poverty is the most most uh, most difficult uh, impediment and the most serious impediment uh, for progress in the 21st century and we have to <coughs> do it uh, we have to get over with it uh, i'm sure that one thing is that possible is enable him give him water in the summer and winter according to his needs so that he doesn't depend on somebody else all right this is the point yeah because he has the land don't go by unfounded fears go by fear of allah all right right yes Thank, thank you very much. With this, we come to the conclusion of the program. There's a lot more we could talk about, but the conclusion is that the transboundary cooperation is necessary uh, for bringing the goods to the common people, and we also should look at the demand side and supply side both. And in the same time, Ed Shamsul Musa has recommended that we should build more water reservoir for use. And with this, we. get uh, leave you with a thought and um, you would want to say something uh, better i guess uh, better cooperation between uh, boundaries and i guess uh, more specified targets for within countries will bring us to a closer uh, uh, to achieve our aims towards water sharing i guess my the my i made good sentence yeah don't be led by unfounded fears <laughs> right so don't be led don't be led by unfounded fears so that is the last sentence from and me. take examples of our neighbors china and india right thank you very much and with this we say goodbye and it's allah hafiz